My name's Steph and I'm a ranger for the National Parks and Wildlife Service uh, and today we're here to talk about the reasons why we don't recommend that you feed wildlife. We're really lucky in South Australia, we get to live around a really diverse amount of wildlife uh, and we get to see that in our national parks but also in our backyards and in our urban environments and lots of people love animals and that's fantastic uh, but people think that they're helping them by feeding them uh, or even leaving out water for, for animals and this isn't always the case, sometimes this can be doing more harm than good. We've probably all had a time we've been about to tuck into a delicious picnic and we could be at the beach or in a park and then all of a sudden we're surrounded by intimidating seagulls or magpies and you might think that it's a nice thing to do to throw them a chip or a piece of bread but what we're actually doing could cause them poor nutrition and this might make the animal become quite ill uh, and in some cases it can also cause death. Some birds like magpies or ducks, you can see them with deformities, uh, for example to their beaks or maybe to their wings, and this is caused often by a poor diet. It can also make animals aggressive, uh, and this is between each other, but also to people. So while having your picnic, keep your food to yourself and don't throw those extra bites away. Feeding and even putting out water for wildlife can contribute to overpopulation and this means that they're breeding up to numbers that are unsustainable. For example, in the summer we might think that it's a really good thing to put out some water for kangaroos, but what we're actually doing is allowing them to think that the conditions are so good in that area that it's okay for them to breed when they otherwise might not. Overpopulation of kangaroos can be really bad for their environment, uh, it becomes unsustainable which means that there's not enough available vegetation to support the number of kangaroos and uh, this can be really bad for our native plants because they might not be able to survive the amount of grazing that's happening on them. When there aren't enough plants to eat the kangaroos might alter their natural behaviour and then they'll move out of their native environment and into a more urban environment and this puts them at risk of possibly being attacked by a dog or hit by a car. It's important to remember that our wildlife usually know the places to source food and water so we can really leave it up to them, they're the experts and then they can maintain their ability to find these things in the wild. Diseases can often be spread by us feeding wildlife and this is happening because we're encouraging them to congregate in an area that might not be very clean or hygienic and this can often happen in places like bird feeders or bird baths. Beak and feather disease is a disease that's really common and highly infectious and it spreads between species of parrots like cockatoos or rosellas or lorikeets. So instead of encouraging birds to feed close together, we want them to naturally forage scattered apart as they do in the wild and then this decreases the likelihood of the spread of disease. So really, uh, wildlife need to socially distance as well. Congregating animals can cause unnaturally high amounts of droppings in one place and this can affect the environmental quality of an area. So places like ponds or lakes where ducks and waterfowl congregate, these can become really unhealthy places for the animals to live. Excessive nutrients from droppings can result in water quality issues uh, such as algal blooms or unsafe bacteria levels. Large amounts of wildlife poo on lawns or walkways can also affect the safety and amenity of an area for people. Pest species may also benefit from food and water that's left out for wildlife. So animals like pigeons or rats or mice, they might start eating the food that you've left out for other native animals to eat. Even some native animals can become pests, such as birds like noisy miners, for example, and they can move into an area where food's been left out for other less common honey eater species. And noisy miners are known to be quite dominant and aggressive, and this prevents other smaller species from living in that area. A food station can be a great place for feral predators such as foxes and cats to find native animals. Unfortunately this means that our native species become the food source themselves. Feeding wild animals and bringing them into our backyards might lead them to cause property damage which can be really costly to repair. Cockatoos are a species which are known to cause a lot of property damage. They like to chew on timber, so things like railings, verandas or pergolas, window frames. And one of the reasons that they're known to do this is because they're bored. 
If animals like this no longer need to spend their time looking for food, you might find that they occupy themselves by destroying you or your neighbour's property. So the best ways that we can interact with wildlife and make sure that we're doing the right thing by them. Appreciating them in their natural habitat when we're out hiking or camping or having a picnic. We can join our local parks volunteer group to help conserve wildlife habitat. If you find a sick or injured animal, then you should take it to your local vet or to a wildlife rescue organisation. And if you'd like to encourage native animals into your backyard, plant native species and maintain a garden that's nice habitat for them. So it's pretty simple, by doing all these things we can help keep our wildlife wild and conserve our native species. To learn more about keeping wildlife wild, head to our website.